Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel Warpaint Off-Road. This is the second video, part two in the Jeep Custom CJ Frame Build Series. And if you haven't watched part one, you're gonna wanna make sure you do it because part two, without the thought process and everything and the planning that went into part one and got us to this point, it's probably gonna be pretty useless for you. Let's get to cutting big metal, make it into small metal, make a frame hopefully by the end of this video that it's gonna be capable of doing about 700 miles an hour over really big rocks. Let's check it out. last video basically by placing this frame on the floor and tack welding these forward pieces into position and at this point we're gonna move forward now guys I've said it a million times right that blueprint it's super important because each piece you do on this frame you have to make sure the frame is nice and square every single time in my garage I got kids running in and out of here. We got neighborhood cats coming into this garage. We got all sorts of stuff going on and God knows what happened to this thing overnight, right? Maybe the ghost of Toyota came in here and kind of kicked it, knocked it out of alignment. So I'm gonna make sure, and in and, and measuring and making sure, I learned something this morning. This frame, I wanna basically copy this frame moving forward with some modifications, but I do wanna keep the factory width of the frame because I know it worked with my motor mounts and all that kind of stuff. Well, this frame is about 29 and a quarter inches wide. And right now, from here to here, I'm only at 29. While that may not seem like a really big deal, that quarter inch moving forward will just kind of make the rest of it potentially get narrower and narrower as we float. So I don't want that to happen. I want to correct the problem now. And this is how I'm gonna do it. I only put one tack weld on the top of this frame to kind of keep it in position and hold the angle where I wanted it. That way I could make adjustments. Well now I'm basically gonna put one tack weld on this side because I need this piece of frame to kind of move out just a touch, right? An eighth, quarter of an inch, not far. So what I'm gonna wind up doing is actually putting a tack weld on the center of this side. That might be enough to pull the steel in that direction with the heat. But if it isn't enough, I then can grind away a little bit at this tack weld and start putting some pressure on it and pull it out. Once I have it out to the right width, then I can tack the other side, tack the top, and then it won't move. It'll hold it in position. We're gonna do the same thing on this side and measure from those ends until the width matches what I have here. So let's get to it. With all that done, oh, beautiful. Look at that, guys. We are, we are right at about 29 and a quarter. It's good enough for me. I've already measured everything else to make sure the rest of the frame is square. Then we're gonna cut our next couple pieces, get this frame moving farther forward. What I'd like to do is basically take that rise that I had in the new frame and basically just carry it farther forward. If anything, raising the front bumper just a little bit more, similar to the front half kits that you see for TJs and YJs and all those kinds of rigs out there, right? It gives you a better approach angle. I'm not overly concerned with my approach angle because with the amount of stretch I'm putting into this Jeep, my front tires are actually gonna stick past the front bumper, but having a little bit better of an approach angle in the front, even with the bumper, is kind of nice because every once in a while into those rocks, just the way they are, sometimes they wind up hitting your front bumper, even if your tires are all the way out in front. But this gets a little bit complicated because I need to be able to fit a radiator in here, right? Now I can cut my grill, I can modify that notch it so that my grill fits down over the edge of the frame and the frame comes through it, but I can't cut and notch my radiator. And I already have one that was sent to me by Cold Cake. Holy moly, guys. This radiator just 
barely fits inside of my frame rails. Now this radiator, you can tell here because of these brackets, it's actually meant to bolt directly to the grill. I don't have the grill here. The grill is actually up at my dad's house with the tub. Putting this radiator in here is basically the closest thing that I can do to determine whether I have enough room to raise the frame and send it forward. To be honest with you, kind of looks like I do. I know it's gonna be really close, and if anything, I can make the frame moving forward just a tad bit wider. I have the ability to do that, no big deal, but I don't wanna make it too wide and have it look like the frame is a lot wider than my grill. That wouldn't be the nicest thing. So we're gonna see what I can do moving forward with this and, uh, see what we can make it look like but for now cold case is getting the job done with this awesome aluminum radiator so with the new frame on top of the old frame i'm able to measure from the new frame forward to figure out how far i can exactly go before i want to start angling it up for that better approach angle guys and it happened again oh would you look at this <laughs> All right, so this frame is supposed to be on top of that jack stand. What wound up happening is I was tacking this stuff and extending it forward like you guys saw. So I needed to basically line the frame up in these tape marks to keep it all nice and square and move it forward. But because I was extending it, it wound up contacting the jack stand. So in my infinite wisdom, Are you stupid or something? I jack up the front of the Jeep frame, balancing it on a two by four. What you just said, is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Not the smartest move. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Like I said, and I've always said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure out how to do it. It may not be the right way, but we're gonna get it done. Well, today we hit a major speed bump. Yeah. The frame fell while I was sliding the jack stand over. Both my arms were on the jack stand. And as the frame fell, I wound up kind of hooking the frame into my arm. And this area of custom leaf spring perch and that hair, that ain't from a deer, that's from my arm. Um, I've never cut my arm so bad that you could see the fat, uh, but that's what that did to me. So one tetanus shot later, can't remember the last one I had, uh, probably means it's been too long. Unfortunately, it pulled off so much of my arm that there wasn't anything to stitch or staple. So now I just have this gaping hole in my arm and I have to wait for it to kind of heal up. A few moments later. And with some time off to let that arm start to heal, a lot more cutting and a lot more welding. The old CJ frame has uh, basically met its maker here. Down at a scrap yard, recycling yard here in Texas, and uh, they're gonna pick it up and do their thing. But the CJ frame, I'm sure it's got some stories to tell, but it is what it is. They did their thing where they're gonna turn it into new steel, probably for a Toyota. This is that front section that I was talking to you about before. It rises up, goes forward. The cross members are in this frame. I have one in the front one in the rear just to hold it square those are temporary but the frame winds up coming back we made it wider as you saw in the first video i kicked it up in the back about five inches now this section is something that i didn't show you on camera because once you understand how you're taking the measurements in the front taking them back here it's basically the same thing you don't need to see me do it fifty thousand times and you'll notice the angles here because this was just straight tube and i cut the angle on one side it doesn't match anymore. So I'm gonna wind up having to actually gusset these, which isn't a bad idea, because this is before the rear axle, and that would be potentially a weak point. I'm also gonna fish plate everything on the outside as well as on the inside. Now I did wind up making the front of the frame a little bit long. That way I could cut it off at the right length once I have the grill on there, the motor in there, and basically have enough room for a winch, nothing more. In the back, I did the same thing, but in the back, I made it much longer because I'm stretching the tub in two places for a total of about seven inches. But that, you're gonna have to wait to see because next on the list, right after I get back from Easter Jeep Safari, I'm diving into those axles so I can set my wheelbase, then start designing some suspension. Making sure you bevel those edges, making sure your angles are right, making sure it's completely square will allow you to get to this point. And at this point, I'm gonna put my cross members in where I need them to go just to make sure that I have the strength for all my suspension, but only after those axles are finished. 
So stay tuned, watch the axle build for this Jeep. I guess we'll figure it out. But anyway, like I said a million times, why don't you guys get out there and build something?